All right, so in the last example, or the last video, we did a couple simple, relatively simple, uh, velocity field problems. In this video, I want to do two, um, uh, two different types of velocity field problems. So we'll just go ahead and start. Uh, let's see, it's black. The very first example, say example, oh, I'll move the paper down, you guys can see it better camera doesn't focus too well. Example one, okay? The velocity field is given by 5z minus 3i plus x plus 4j plus 4yk. And the units are in feet per second. You can see that feet per second, okay? And there's two parts to this question. The first part is asking, what's the speed? Remember, this is speed, not velocity. What's the speed at the origin? And the second part is, what's the speed on just the x-axis? So, tricky questions, but I'm sure we can figure it out. So, the first part, we'll call it part A, it's asking for the speed at the origin. And at the origin of our, you know, coordinate system, right, here's the origin. At the origin, x is equal to y is equal to z is equal to 0. They're all 0, right? So we can plug that in. At the origin, we'll find the speed at 0, 0, 0, because that's the origin. And that's equal to... 5 times 0 minus 3 in the i plus 0 plus 4 in the j plus 4 times 0 in the k feet per second. Okay? So the velocity at the origin, I'll just call it origin, is equal to negative 3i plus 4j feet per second. Pretty simple. Now, let's find the speed, or the magnitude. So, the magnitude of the velocity field is equal to the speed. And that's equal to, you know how to find magnitudes, square both components, add them, and then take the square root of them. So, it's negative 3 squared plus 4 squared. Take the square root of that plug it in, I get about, I get 5 feet per second. 5 feet per second. So there's the speed at the origin. Speed at origin. Now the second part is, ask, is asking, what's the, what's the speed at the x, on the x-axis? So on the x-axis, we know y is going to be equal to z, and that's going to be equal to 0. So we want it on the x-axis, where y and z are equal to 0. Okay? So we just plug that in. So the velocity in the x-axis is going to be equal to 5 times 0 minus 3i plus x plus 4j plus 4 times 0, k, okay? And we get negative uh, 3i plus x plus 4, j plus 0, k. And to find the speed, we square all the components, add them, and take the square root of that. So the speed is going to be equal to negative 3 squared plus x plus 4, 4 squared plus 0 squared. We'll take the square root of that. We get 9 plus x squared plus 8x uh, plus 16. Yeah, and that's still square rooted. And we get x squared plus 8x plus 25 feet per second. There's our speed along the x-axis. So any, any x point we put in, we're going to get that speed going along the x-axis, okay? So that's our first example. Let's do another one. 
our final example. So the question states, the components of a velocity field are given by are given by v of x is equal to x plus y, v of y is equal to x y cubed plus 16, and v of z is equal to 0. Okay? Determine the location of any stagnation points in the flow field, in the velocity flow field. Stagnation points. Hmm. New vocabulary. Stagnation points, all that means is the points where the velocity field is equal to zero. Okay? That's a stagnation point. So first let's 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 rewrite the velocity field using these three components. So the velocity field is going to be equal to x plus y i plus x y cubed plus sixteen j plus zero k. Okay, that's our velocity field. Find the points where this is equal to zero. Those are stagnation points. Okay? So, in order for a vector to be equal to zero, every component of that vector needs to be equal to zero. Okay? And look, look, look here. The z component is already equal to zero, so we don't need to worry about that. So, our x component is x plus y, and that needs to be equal to zero. Secondly, our y component needs to be also equal to zero. x, y cubed plus 16 is equal to zero. And since we broke these out of their components, we just have two simultaneous equations. We have two equations, and we also have two unknowns, x and y, x and y. So here, we can solve x is equal to negative y. We can take this, plug it into equation number 2, to get negative y, y cubed, plus 16 is equal to 0. Uh, that turns out to be y, um, negative y to the fourth, plus 16, is equal to 0. Uh, add that to the other side, y fourth, y uh, to the fourth power is equal to 16. We get y is equal to positive 2 and negative 2, so plus or minus 2. Okay? And we take this y and we plug it back into here to find the corresponding x values. So for y is equal to positive 2, x is going to be, you plug positive 2 into there, you get a negative 2 for x. And for y is equal to negative 2, you plug this into here to get negative negative 2, which is positive 2, is equal to x. So x is positive 2 in here. Okay? So those are our stagnation points. If we plug this into our original velocity field, we'll get 0. That's where the velocity field is equal to 0. So our final answer our stagnation points, or where v is equal to zero, that's at uh, negative two, two, right, x, y, and two, negative two. All right.